welcome to this week and for next two to three weeks, we will talk about the electrochemical sensors. As a matter of fact, if we look back around 1960s, the electrochemical biosensors based research was uh, picking up and uh, the very first uh, landmark work was by Clark, it is the Clark's electrode which is used for measuring oxygen and from that point onward, there is no looking back for last 60 years or so, the field of electrochemical sensors have rapidly moved. There are multiple reasons which we will be discussing. So, initially we will try to get an overview about electrochemical sensors and in order to maintain the continuity, what I have done is in the previous week, we talked about insulin and we talked about how glucose is being handled and what leads to diabetes, malfunctioning of insulin regulation leading to diabetes. So, one of the major discovery or as a matter of fact, the very first biosensor which was developed was a glucose sensor. So, since it is pretty fresh in your mind from the last week, the whole controversial picture of insulin, glucose and how leading to diabetes and how that could be used as a potential murder weapon. So, today we will continue in that line about glucose biosensor and then of course, following that we will talk about the exact design, how the Clark's electrode was made with a little bit of an overview of the birth of electrochemistry which dates back to 1901, 1910, specifically all the way back to de Huckel's theory and a series of different kind of work which and Habrowski's uh, mercury electrode and three electrode system, two electrode systems, advantages, disadvantages and then we will talk about the polarimetry, voltammetry and all those different topics. But at this point, we will initiate this week with some examples. So, that once you have a understanding of significance of these kind of biosensors, you develop a taste of doing those things in your lab and develop those kind of bioelectrodes. So, when you talk about uh, electrochemical biosensors, there are four critical points which distinguishes electrochemical biosensors in terms of its popularity, in terms of its um, likability and in terms of its choice. The first thing is the time. Most of the electrochemical or you can even call them in this situation uh, bio electrochemical biosensors they function at a pretty rapid pace. You get the data pretty fast. Second thing, the simplicity. This whole simplicity lies in electron transfer. The whole process is governed with electron transfer. That means, the sensitivity of measuring electron transfer will decide the success of these kind of materials or these kind of biosensors. Rapid response for clinical sample analysis and they are one of the popular thing for point of care devices. That means, something like a handheld glucose sensor or handheld serotonin sensor with one droplet of blood, you can sense it and of course, now there are several models which are coming which are non-invasive, 
but we are not getting into that at this point. But these are the critical aspects what helps electrochemical biosensors to hold the central stage in research and commercialization and applicability and adaptability. So, once again the rapid time, simplicity, sensitivity, rapid response for clinical sample analysis and point of care for any kind of device. In terms of the basic definition, the IUPAC definition of it is that electrochemical biosensors are self contained integrated devices which are capable of providing specific quantitative or semi quantitative analytical information using a biological recognition element which is called a biochemical receptors. So, this is the one which is detecting the element say for example, if it is a glucose or it is NO2, it is CO2. So, there is a biochemical receptor which is retained in direct spatial contact with the electrochemical transducer element. So, this bio chemical receptor upon binding to its receptor does some electrical activity and these electrical activities are detected by the electrochemical transduction elements. So, this is how this whole process works. This is the most simplest definition, it is a kind of encompassing all the possible permutations and combinations. Okay. So, now in terms of the usage, if you talk about there are broad applications, environmental monitoring, whether we are talking about river water or pond water, we are talking about mines, talking about space, we are talking about undersea, any kind of ecological niche you will find bioelectrochemical sensors, be it a carbon dioxide sensor, be it oxygen sensors, be it NO2 sensors, be it glucose sensors, be it any DDT or wanted to write pesticide or insecticide sensors any kind of environmental monitoring and this includes even agricultural fields, food, pathogen. Second major market of electrochemical biosensors is healthcare glucose, toxins, serotonin and other hormones, different clinical agents, different metabolites. And so on and so forth this includes even urine samples. Third is biological analysis. Most of the labs have some analytical tools or other. These bioelectrochemical sensors 
are some of the workhorse in most of these places, say for example, detection of fertilizers, detection of uh, VOCs, volatile organic compounds, liberation of uh, some kind of a fermented product, all over the place you will find some form or other involvement of bioelectrochemical sensors. Now, how we classify them? What are the broad class? There are multiple classifications though. Here, I am providing a very broad classification, but that is not necessarily that you have to exclusively follow this classification. The classification as you will read more and more, more and more different kind of uh, classification will emerge through your own experience. But broadly speaking, depending on the recognition process, the biosensors can be classified into two main groups. So, it is a recognition process. When what we meant by recognition process is here that electrochemical biosensors are self-contained integrated devices which are capable of providing specific quantitative or semi-quantitative analytical information using a biological recognition element which is a biochemical receptor. Now, when we are talking about recognition process, it is that a receptor we are talking about can be subdivided into two main categories. One is affinity, the other one is biocatalytic sensors. What is affinity and what is biocatalytic sensors? Now, affinity sensors operate via selective binding between the analyte and the biological component. It could be antibody, it could be a nucleic acid, it could be a aptamer, we have already studied about it, we, it could be a nanobody, it could be some small fragment of antibody, likewise. There is an affinity, there is an affinity of going close to it and binding to it like this. Okay? And during this binding process, some form of electrical events occur and we try to quantify those electrical events. The second one in contrast is called biocatalytic devices. Biocatalytic devices when we talk about catalysis, it means there must be a catalyst, right. And in organic chemistry, we all know about what is a catalyst and in biology, the equivalent similar form is called enzymes. So, when we are talking about biocatalytic devices, it means there should be a catalytic agent or there must be an enzyme. It incorporates an enzyme, whole cells or tissues, slices that recognize the target analyte and subsequently produce a electroactive species. This part 2 is very important, subsequently produce a electroactive species. So, this definition brings us to that level what we call as whole cell biosensors, and we will talk about it. Then, tissue slices are called organotypic biosensors, because part of the organs are there and then these are called enzymatic biosensor. So, today we are not going to focus on whole cell or organotypic biosensor, I will come to that later, but we will talk mostly about the enzymatic biosensor. So, when you talk about enzyme, uh, enzyme is something which catalyzes a reaction, we all know this, right. Without getting consumed, in a way what it does is that it orchestrated a oxidation or a reduction process on 
a molecule, thereby either allowing an electron to be donated to it or an electron being released by it. So, whenever there is a donation or a release of electrons, that could be translated into current and that is the key for recognizing an analyte, because that electron transfer process is very unique for individual compounds. Now, if we talk about the very first biosensor, as I was mentioning in the beginning, the first biosensor was developed by Clark and Leon in 1962. That is why I told you for last uh, almost 60 years, the field has gradually flourished and today, this is one of the most promising and employment generating field and with lot of innovations which could be done here. This biosensors was composed of oxygen electrode, an inner oxygen semi permeable membrane and a thin layer of glucose oxidase. Now, going back, you see this is a biocatalytic device because it has an enzyme glucose oxidase, GOX stand for glucose oxidase and EC what you see is the enzyme identification number, enzyme catalog number which is 1.1.3.4. Entrapped by a dialysis membrane, the decrease in the level of glucose was proportional to the concentration of glucose resulting from the enzyme catalyzed oxidation of beta D glucose to beta D gluconolactone. So, essentially the reaction is something like this. So, you have glucose plus oxygen and there is glucose oxidase which is catalyzing this reaction and this leads to glucose getting transformed into gluconic acid whereas oxygen is getting reduced to peroxide. So, here is a reduction reaction happening, there is a oxidation reduction happening. So, it is a redox reaction, reduction and oxidation. This redox chemistry is being utilized by Clark and Lyon to develop the first glucose sensor. Now, exactly what is happening? Overall chemistry of the glucose sensor. So, you have a enzyme here which is glucose oxidase The first enzyme based electrode for glucose detection was reported by Clark and Leo in 1962. This device was based on glucose oxidase entrapped within a semi permeable dialysis membrane, which was constructed on an oxygen electrode. Following this, Clark's patent in 1970 demonstrated the use of enzyme to convert electro inactive substrate to electroactive substrate. Okay. So, I already showed you the reaction earlier, glucose becoming gluconic acid and oxygen becoming peroxide. Now, if you look at this situation, this is how it looks like. So, you have the glucose by the action of glucose oxidase becomes gluconic acid. Okay? Now, what is happening here? H2O plus oxygen you are getting peroxide and during this process, this liberates two electron and this is on the anode. We will come to the details of the construction of this, but this is overall a reduction reaction where this transformation is happening, oxygen becoming peroxide, this liberates two electron and this is, is being measured. Now, how this is being carried out? There is a catch here. Okay? So, 
before we get into the catch, we will be talking next about electrode systems in the glucose sensor. So, we will again continue on this enzymatic amperometric method for glucose sensing in the next class. So, thank you and we will resume this in the next class.